So object literals like the one you see on the screen now are an extremely common way of storing data in JavaScript in key value format. So first name is a key, captain here is the value, and together they are known as a property. Now, object literals are extremely useful for storing data, but they are annoyingly non-iterable. So if I try and loop through an object literal using a for loop, I want the loop to break when i is no longer less than my object.length and i should increase by one each time and for each loop I want to log my object and whatever is at uh, the index of i each time. So let's have a look at what that brings up in the console you might be surprised to see that that is logging nothing. So I'm refreshing and nothing's occurring. Now, the reason is that the length method does not work on an object. So if I log whatever length is to the console, you see that this is returning undefined. And this is the reason that we saw nothing in the console first time around because the loop was never executed, not even once. So if I try and log X, you see that X is not being uh, produced in the console. So what I'm going to do is, first of all, get rid of these consoles and then hard code the length. So I'm going to say when I is less than five and we'll see what this produces. So this time undefined is being logged to the console five times in a row. Now, the reason is that i starts at zero and increases by one each time until it's four. And then that's the last time the loop will run. But there's no property here at these indexes. So it's actually trying each time to access a property with the key zero, one, two, three, four. And I can show you that's the case by creating a new property here. I'll just say x as the value and you'll see that when I do that, it's logging X to the console. Now, the reason it's not working is that we're trying to access each property by a numeric index, and instead we should be trying to access it by its property name, which is why zero printed X to the console in the loop. So a for loop doesn't work, and for the same reason, uh, the map method doesn't work, for each doesn't work, and for of loop won't work either. So what are your options for iterating through an object literal like this? So thankfully there is one loop that we can employ to iterate through the keys of an object literal, and that is a for in loop. So this works in the following way. We say for key in, and then we need to input the object. Okay. And what this is going to return to us is the object key for each property. So if I log that to the console, you'll see each of these keys logged one at a time. So you're probably wondering, how do we get the values? Now, the way that we can do that is to simply say my object and then query it in each loop by the key, right? So we're no longer querying the object literal by numeric index, we're using the key that we're extracting in the for loop to access each of the values. Now, if you'd like to arrayify this, so all of this information is in a single data object that is iterable, you can do this by creating a new array before the loop. So I'll call this data array. And then inside the loop, each time it iterates, we want to create a new variable and we'll call it entry. And that's just going to be an empty array at first. And then I can use the push method to push, first of all, a key into the entry. And second, the value which is accessed 
by querying the object with the key like that. So to finish, we want to again use the push method. This time we're pushing the complete entry into the data array. So I can say data array dot push, and then I want the entry to be pushed into it. Now, if I console log data array after the loop, this will show us all of this information stored in an array of arrays. So each property is now an array within the parent array. And each of these arrays for the properties contains two elements. The first one is the property key, and the second one is the property value. So now you have the object available to you as an iterable array object. So you can run a for loop over this, you can run map over this for each, etc. Now, this is the first way that you might want to do it. The second way is using the inbuilt object constructor. So I'm going to comment this out and shift this down. So the way that this works is you just call object with a capital O, and then we can say entries, and this is going to arrayify both keys and values. If I say values, it's going to arrayify only the values. And if you want the keys, you can do that with the keys method, and it's just gonna get the keys. So let's do entries. Now this is going to produce an identical object to the one that we already have here produced using the for in loop and all of this syntax within the loop. So this is another way to do that. So you pass in the object into the method and then I'll save that as data array because I commented the last one out so that's going to be fine. Then I'm going to log the contents of the data array to the console. So we have a data array that contains five arrays and each of these nested arrays contains two elements, the property and value. Now let's say I only want the values because sometimes you don't want the property names. You can do that like this. And now it's not a nested array, it's just uh, an array one level array of length five with the values. And now if you use keys, that's going to return the keys to you. So now that I've converted my data object into an array, I can now use all of the kind of popular iterable methods that I might want to use when editing and manipulating the data. So I can say object dot entries if I want to use my for loop which wasn't working at the beginning of this tutorial tutorial I can say so for example data array dot length this is going to work unlike for an object and if I log the index of I this is going to return the entries to me and you can now apply all of the other useful iterable methods that you may like to use like for each and map that you can't apply to an object literal. So those are your two options for iterating through an object. Either use the inbuilt object constructor or use a for in loop querying the object by the keys.